What's up, divas? What's up, divas? What's up, divos? What's up, everybody? What's up? Happy Wednesday. You know what time it is. What's up, y'all? What's up, divas and divos? What's up? Thank you for coming back to my channel. Y'all already know what time it is. It's Real Talk Wednesday. So we are here to talk ish, okay? We don't spill tea. We just actually talk real facts and give our opinions. No advice, just giving our daily opinions, weekly opinions, how we handle the situation. So welcome back to my channel, y'all. Hope y'all are having like a really great day whenever you're watching this with your girl A, okay? We ain't come to slay, but we still gonna be cute, okay? What's up, y'all? Hope y'all are having like a really great day. Y'all know what time it is. It's Real Talk Wednesday. It's Monday, but by the time y'all watch this, it will be Wednesday. Y'all know I have to be prepared for a lot of stuff. Like, I don't like to record anything the day of or the day before, because girl, listen, I be having enough to do. Like, seriously, I be having a whole lot of shit to do, okay? So I just want to get that out the way. But other than that, you know what I'm saying? My weekend was chill, Saturday and Sunday. I really didn't have to do much of anything. You know what I'm saying? Like, I try to get my videos done throughout the week so I can try to relax and do nothing on the weekends. Like, doing nothing is really, really hard for me. And I, I really strive to be, like, have one lazy day. But... I'm the type of person, I just cannot sit still for too long. I definitely cannot sit still and watch a TV series or a movie without doing something else. Like, I have to multitask when I'm doing something. So if I'm watching, like, one of my favorite shows, which is The Walking Dead or Fear of the Walking Dead or what else do I like? I like a lot. I don't like a lot of things, but I do like certain shows. But when I'm watching TV, you know what I'm saying, I always got to be doing something. It's either editing a video or playing a game on my phone. Like, I cannot just focus on one thing. And I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but girl, let me tell y'all, sitting still is not for me. Like, I've, I've been trying to do that. I, I really want to be lazy on the weekend and wear my little moo, moo all weekend, but it just doesn't work out like that. Like, so I was kind of lazy this weekend. Me and my granddaughter, we chill while Tati and Tinky went and got his hair retwisted. Um, what else did we do? I did laundry. I folded clothes. I mean, those are just little minor things, but I did do those things. Okay. I didn't do anything extraordinary. Like, you know what I'm saying? I did edit like three videos because like I said, I be trying to multitask and I really don't be wanting to edit videos on the weekend, but something be calling me like, girl, you can't, I just can't sit still. I don't know if I'm the only person that feels like that, but I just cannot sit still and do nothing all day. That's me in a nutshell. Okay. What can I say? But yeah, other than that, you know what I'm saying? So y'all know I had to go to California on Thursday to bring my son for his sentencing. And let me tell you, that drive is five hours and 30 minutes. Okay. Now, Kelly was on, was an hour behind us. So it gave me a little extra time, but you know, daylight savings times has started. So we are actually on the same time zone right now, like the same time frame. So we left at 3.30 in the morning. Okay. But here's the good thing about it. Um, well, there's no good thing about it, but I didn't have to be by myself, like alone on a drive back. My daughter-in-law actually did come along with me. She and I were talking like two days prior and I was just saying to her how I'm going to have to drive back alone for all that length of time. And I really don't want to be alone. Like nobody wants to drive alone. I mean, sometimes I do like to be alone. So she volunteered to come and she brought the two youngest, which is the three-year-old and the five-year-old. And it was perfect. They like slept like the entire ride there and back. So it was really quiet. They were just great, 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 great. So I was glad that I had the company. But girl, let me tell you, when you get back from like long trips, like 11 hours of driving, girl, you be so exhausted. Like the next day, you'd be like totally exhausted. Your body be so exhausted. And that's how I felt for like the very next day. On Friday, I was like, my body was exhausted. I got home at 10. 30 on Thursday evening. Now y'all like, girl, why was you going so long? So when we got there, you know, like I said, the court starts at 9, 9.30, 9 o'clock. So when we got there, we was on time. You know, I had to find a parking spot underground parking lot that I did park in. And that ended up being $30 for the hours that I needed it to be. But anyway, when we got there, you know, we in the lobby waiting. We talking to the lawyer. Please tell me why. She was like that. They either going to want us to come back the next day, which was Friday, or we're going to have to wait some hours because they're trying to bring the defendant, the co-defendant um, from where they were stationed at, which was in AZ, okay, Arizona. Girl, when I tell you they was like, come back at three o'clock. So y'all wanted us to come back at three o'clock. The fuck? It's nine. What are we supposed to do for 10, 11, 12, 1, 2, 3, 6 hours? Like, about? So, 2.30, 3 o'clock, they said. So, what are we supposed to do for all those hours? Like, what do you really want somebody to do in that area? Like, the, where all the... um courts and stuff was at there really isn't much to do the lawyer was kind of upset she's pregnant too her baby is due this month she's a real sweetheart and it was a pleasure meeting her this is not the first time i met her but you know it was a pleasure being able to meet her so she suggested we go get some breakfast so we did go get something to eat some breakfast all of us and then she was suggesting to go to the 
what is it called? The new, it's called the new children's museum, which was an eight to 10 minute walk from the courthouse. And mind you, I was not about to take my car out of the parking garage because then I'd have to pay another fee. And it was right in that kind of like same area. So we went and we did that. We walked to the new children's museum. Okay. And girl, let me tell you, I, you know me, I'm a museum is where you learn shit. Okay. That's what I thought, but there really wasn't anything to learn there. There was just like a bunch of activities for them to do. There were three floors of wilding out. Okay. When I say wilding out, I mean wilding out. My grandson, who's three, the one that is autistic girl, when I tell you he could get, he can move that little motherfucker can move. Like he'd be pew out like seriously you have to really keep up with him and i was trying to be helpful because you know she's about to have a baby so i was trying to really be helpful and you know hold him down while my son held the other one down but girl when i tell you i was tired i was tired and that place will have you tired like it tired me out just from trying to grab onto kids and stuff um but we spent some time there then right across the street from the new children's museum is this really nice park it's a fenced in area for the kids to play then they have in another section they have like this pond don't get me to lying i don't know if you can swim in it i've seen the ducks in it it looks like it wants to be like kind of like somewhat a splash pad but i don't really know but it was really nice and new wasn't nobody in there so i don't know and then in another section is the dog park uh section and then there's this other section where they have like these workout stuff really cool park really really nice so we sat there for a, a while and let them play and my son you know he played with them you know until it was time to go back to court before we went back to court after the park we went back to the parking garage and sat in the car for like 45 minutes because girl i needed to take a break i needed to take a rest and I had had enough for the day. When I tell y'all I had had enough for the day, I had had enough for the day. And so when we went to court, finally, the day was over, like not over, but you know, it was time to go back. Um, They did sentence him to 36 months. They uh, sentenced him to 36 months and then they give you like these time off points. Now, mind you, I don't really know anything about all these time off points, but from what his lawyer tried to explain to me um, and from my knowledge that I grasped, it ended up being like a little bit over two years because you get points off for or not having a criminal record you get points off of playing a minor role in the decision of doing something wrong and you get other points off if you like do programs look girl i don't know but yeah so it'll look like it's a little bit over two years and then you she gave me a list of facilities that she wanted to send him to there's like four in the list majority of them three of them i do believe or two of them was in arizona so that was a plus but girl when i was in there like when i was hearing what the judge was saying to him and you know i just was crying because I was hurt. I was like really, really hurt, um, disappointed. And I really didn't want him to see me crying like that, but it just bothered me. Cause I don't, I didn't want to sit there like that. Like I literally did not want to hear any of that. I didn't want to sit there and just be a part of any of that. But you know, I'm there for the support that as a mother, but um, so 36 months and with all these points off, it'll look like a little bit over um, two years. Um, yeah, I don't understand all of that lingo, but it's federal time. So, you know, it is what it is. Um, I wish him nothing but the best and be safe. You know what I'm saying? Safe, be safe, because you're just too grown to be doing dumb shit. And you know, this was all over, um, what's the right word? Transporting um, paraphernalia from Mexico. Who the fuck is in there? Who, why would you do something so stupid? You know, as soon as you got over the border, you were stopped by the California um, Border Patrol. So you're lucky that you did get caught in the United States and not in another country, which is Mexico, because don't nobody want to go to jail in Mexico. I'm pretty sure even Mexicans do not want to go to jail in Mexico. And I don't mean no disrespect when I say that, but I've seen the quality of living in the jails at, in Mexico. And I didn't see them personally, but I've seen them on TV. And that was enough for me. I, listen, I don't want to be locked up anywhere, to be honest with you. I really don't want to be locked up anywhere. But yeah, so 36 months for transportation of paraphernalia over the border. Um, doing dumb shit and he played a minor role because he was um not the transporter but he was along there along with the shenanigans yeah so <sighs> this is going to be like a it's not going to be a long journey but i know if i were somewhere like that it would be a long journey to me but let me tell y'all the, the, the drive home was it just seemed like it was never ending so mind you it just it was just like a very very long day now mind you normally when i do this trip i'm home before it hits dark outside i really don't like to drive at night because you know i already have bad vision so driving at night in on roads that don't have any type of lights is like oh my god and no it's not on the freeway but it's kind of like called a bypass road it's like a bypass road from arizona to california and i believe it's um Interstate 8 and Interstate 85. So you do get on the freeway for some of it, the 10, and then you get off of the exit and you drive this interstate bypass road for 
like the entire way. Like when I tell you the entire way, the entire way. So when I go in the morning at 3.30, you know, it's already dark. And then when I came home, it was dark, dark, dark too. So this is my thing. When it's dark outside, I do have my high beams on because there's really nobody on these roads. Mainly you will see people, um, the most you will see is like truck drivers during certain hours, you know what I'm saying? But you won't see like a lot of cars. So what I do, because I can't really see in the dark, I always find a 18 wheeler who is going the same direction as me. Like I don't scout them out, but they end up being on the same road as I, and I will let them pass me. And then I'll just stay behind them because they're like my pathway to the light. So, you know, when you have like these big 18 wheeler trucks and they're, they're kind of like guiding me, they're my pathway to light. And so even when my lights hitting on the back of their truck, it gives me more light. And they're, like I said, the pathway on the way home, I had to drive probably like 15, 20 minutes without one until like this amazing one came, which was by the gas station circle K. And his whole back um, was lit up, lit up to the point where girl, I didn't even need my lights on. But I was so happy because I followed him all the way into my exit. And when we got off, my daughter-in-law was like, you know, he was looking at us as we passed him by. Like, I wasn't trying to steal your gas, honey. I was using you for your leeway, for your pathway, for your light. So that's what I do when it's so dark at night and I'm on like one of these roads where there's not a lot of lights to see. I get behind like an 18 wheeler truck and I just allow them to drive like just to to lead me. I love I, this is what I do. I don't care if they're going. They don't they never go too slow. They go like the right speed. Some of them be speeding. So, you know, what I'm saying I try to stay behind the ones that, you know, are not too slow and are not too fast. Just the right. You know, what I'm saying speed because I don't really want to be speeding in the middle of nowhere and in the darkness. I just don't. So, yeah, if you are what, like me who don't like to drive in the dark on long trips and there's hardly any lights, get, get behind a good 18 wheeler truck. I'm telling you, they are lit up they will light up the whole side where you driving at girl you feel so much more safer even my daughter was like oh this is what you do this is what you do she said i said yeah she said oh okay that sounds like a plan because she doesn't like driving at night either she don't either and she's more or less a new driver so that's what i do just to feel safe and to get me some light but girl yes it was a long long ass thursday and when i got home when i tell you i got home i was so happy because like i said it was long 11 hours of driving Ooh, child, I know my car probably was like, girl, can we get a break? My legs is tired. That's what my Thursday was like. Now, also, let me just put this out here. I want to say thank you to everybody who has been donating to the virtual baby shower. Y'all, y'all have, y'all are like amazing to me. I don't know if I could kiss y'all through the screen. I will kiss and hug y'all through the screen. Like y'all are so effing amazing. Thank you so much, everybody who has been sending gifts through Amazon baby registry. Y'all are amazing. Y'all are amazing with y'all comments. Y'all are amazing with y'all love and support. Like straight up, y'all are an amazing family virtual family. I, I really want to have something one day where I can meet and greet everybody and we could just party and have a good time. I've been wanting to do this for a while, but I really would love to meet everybody. Like seriously, because I've been down with you guys and y'all been down with me for God knows how long. So it's always a blessing to be able to speak to you guys and to get to know you guys. So I want to say thank you so much to everybody. Thank you so much. I will keep including the link down below. So if you want to go ahead and check out the baby registry, please do so. Please go ahead and feel free to donate whatever you want to the baby registry. I will link it below. Excuse me. I'm trying to help out my daughter-in-law, like I stated before, because they are having their fourth baby. So now she is a single mom um, for a couple of years, but I will be there to help out as much as possible. So I ask you all to please check the baby registry down below and, you know, donate if you can. I will deeply and gratefully appreciate anything that is sent for my sixth grandchild. Y'all, <laughs> six grandkids. But also this video is being sponsored by, okay, Chic Curve. No, um, Chic Curve. Chic Curve. This video is being sponsored by Chic Curve, where you can get you some snatched waist trainers, snatched body shakers, snatched. Okay, when you want to be snatched, get snatched. Girl, let me tell y'all. Okay, now this one right here, girl. Okay, so I have one of their other body shapers, and I love it. But here's the thing. I be telling y'all, it's too damn hot out here in Arizona to be wearing some body shapers during the heat. But I've been told and told by one of my viewers, Megan, if you watching, Megan, Megan has been down with me for a while. Megan was like, listen, this is a definitely good time to wear body shapers in the heat. So I get what Megan is saying because you could sweat your ass off and sweat the fat off. But I don't know. Like, it gets so hot out here, 125 degrees. Like, girl, listen, I ain't trying to die. I am not trying to die. Plus, I hate shapewear where... Okay, so there's so many different shapewears. They have these shapewears where there's a zipper between the crotch and it goes all the way up the, your backside. How do you expect me to zipper all of that up in the back if I have to use the bathroom? Or, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's a far reach. I like the, the shapewear that have the, the snaps in the crotch because zippering up all the way to the back that's really really hard girl i'll leave the shit open better yet 
I will not even wear it sometimes because, listen, if I feel like I have to use the bathroom too much, I'm not wearing no shaper because I am not going to fight in the bathroom with rolling shit down or popping shit open or any of that stuff. But, girl, listen, we sometimes need it. And y'all know I be always talking shit about my freaking fupa and how much I hate it and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. She curve is about to have me snatched, okay? Have me snatched. Now, y'all see this? I'm going to I'm I'm put a picture up on the thing, but, y'all, check this one out. This is one of the ones that they sent me. This is a Baja, and I think I'm going to be really snatched in this, okay? But I do like the bottom part. You don't have to use any zippers or uh, snaps. It just opens in the bottom. It just, you know, once you sit, it opens. Now, doing a number two, honey, I think you're going to have to take this off, or you're going to have to wait till you get home. But this is one of them. It has the lace at the bottom, and also has the grip, so it doesn't roll up. And those grips really do work. I do have another body shaper by them that comes up high-waisted, and it works. The grip works. Um nice holding your back fat if you got back fat i don't have no rolls in my back that's the one thing that i'm happy about i don't have back rolls okay I, but i got a fupa roll and i'm tired of that pound cake in the front and i'm gonna do a whole separate video of me wearing these so that'll be after i record this and then i got this one right here which is not as long and it does have the snaps in the crotch but this one is not as long look i'm trying to be snatched whenever i feel like being snatched whenever i feel like looking really presentable when i need to you know what i'm saying but yeah check out chic curve they have a lot when i say they have a lot of different shapewears honey they have so many different shapewears Yes, I love Chic Curve. They have so many different shapewears. But the one weird thing about it is um, I don't really know what country they come from. I think they come maybe from China. I'm not really sure. However, here's the thing. I wear a 3X in their shapewear. Like, literally, I look at the measurements. Because one time I tried to get a 2X in this other company shapewear. Girl, that was not going on. So my thing is this. I really do like to go to this one boutique in the mall out here where she finds and helps you get your proper sizing. Like, that's me. If I have to pay for shapewear, I'm not buying it from, like, Amazon or anything online. I'm going to go to this one particular spot because she measures you and she helps you find the perfect item that you'll be comfortable in. I've done this before with a waist trainer and girl, when I tell you I wore that waist trainer out, but she curved, they got plenty of different shapewear for y'all. So check them out, girl. They want you to get snatched. You want to get snatched, get snatched. Okay, girl, get snatched. All right. But other than that, let me tell y'all. Okay, so we got an update. We have an update. I do have two emails to read to you guys for Real Talk. Also, all of the bracelets that I made on my website, I'm about to put them on sale so I can get rid of the inventory. So as you guys see, these are my bracelets. I've created these. I have plenty on my website now. Yeah, they were like $60, $70 because it's time. Time is put into this. Money is put into this. So I am going to be lowering the prices of them. They're going to be going on sale. So that way I can get rid of the inventory. So for you ladies who have wanted bracelets like this, then go ahead and check out my website. I'm going to post it down below. I'm going to also be posting them on sale. So that way I can get rid of them and I can just start anew. I have so much inventory to create bracelets. And sometimes it feels very discouraging that they are not purchased. I really do want to go though this summer to the farmer's market and have a little table and sell my stuff so that way I can get rid of it but it'd be so hot out here and also I don't really know how to go about doing it so I'm gonna have to be researching and looking into that because going to the farmer's market maybe like once a week on the weekends you know and just putting some things up for sale in hopes that somebody would purchase would be great you know what I'm saying um I don't want to buy stuff and then not be able to sell it but yeah check out my website and I will leave the link down below for my bracelets. All right. Made by Muff. Yes. Made by Muff. Now, other than that, like I was saying, we do have an update. So remember last week when we did the email and I do believe I called her Candace. She had, um, her mother had passed away in her twenties. And so, um, there was a lady that took on the responsibility of being there for her. This lady also had children and one of her children, which was named Stephanie was Candace's best friend. Now, Stephanie was unaware that Candace loaned her mother $2,500 to repair her car. And this was because her mother was in the, in a contract with the bank to purchase her very first home. So when you're in a contract with the bank, you cannot use your credit card for big and high-end purchases because they are eyeballing everything. And this could mess up your contract with the bank. And this could also mess up your loan with the bank of getting you a new home. Now, mind you, the lady also did end up saving $21,000 to put down on a home. What she only had to put was $11,000 down on this home, which left her with $10,000. So... Candace did let the woman know who purchased the home, who she loaned the money to. She did have a contract written out that once she is done with the bank contract of getting the home, once she has given the money for the down payment of her home, once the bank is already approved her, she is to pay Candace back the $2,500 that she loaned her to get her car repaired. So on that day, once the house was then paid down for, the down payment was paid, the, the woman did pay Candace some of her money back. She paid Candace back $200 out of $2,500 because she stated that there was only $200 on her Apple Pay. She would make sure to send her the rest. Long story short, 
Candace never got her money. Candace reached out to this woman. She never got a reply. She didn't know what to do. She, she basically said that she wanted to bring her to small claims court because this was a loan, which she did sign a verbal and written contract with Candace stating that as soon as the down payment was made for her new home, she would go and then turn around and pay Candace back her $2,500 that was loaned to her for repairs to her car. Well, she did not come through on her promise. I let Candace know maybe you should speak to her daughter because Stephanie, her daughter, was not aware of any of this transpiring. I said, maybe take her out for lunch or dinner or what have you, because I feel like sometimes in public settings, sometimes people won't make a fool of themselves. They won't make an ass of themselves. She didn't want to bring this woman to family, excuse me, to, to um, small claims court. So I said, talk to her daughter about it first and see what her input is. OK, well, we got an update, honey. OK, and the update is not that great. All right. So let's read this update real quick. Now, y'all already know this is real talk. So if you want a real talk about you, go ahead and send me an email to Muffin is my lovers 2012 at gmail.com. Put in the subject line real talk or you can also use my real talk, which is April's real talk at gmail.com. And please put in their subject line real talk. If you would like for me to change the names of those in this email, please let me know or you can do so on your own. But girl, let's get into this update and the two other emails that we're going to be reading today as well. So she did send me an update on the situation. And I believe I got this. I got this on Friday because I remember I was laying on the couch. I was so fucking tired from the drive. So this is the update. Hi, April. I believe you called me Candace in your Real Talk video. I wanted to provide you an update on the situation about my best friend's mom, Wanda, borrowing $2,500 from me while under contract for the purchase of her home. I invited Stephanie, her daughter, to dinner Wednesday night and told her about her mother not paying me back and showed her a copy of the paper. April, when I tell you Stephanie cut up so bad on me, we almost got into a fight. She takes the paper and ripped it up and said, after all my mother has done for you, you talking about taking her to court knowing she just bought a house. You need to just count that as a housewarming gift and move on. Family doesn't keep tabs. I said, I didn't get a housewarming gift when I closed. And this paper says it was a loan, not a gift. And if I'm not paid back, it has to go to court. I have the original paper at home, April. Stephanie started getting real loud and starting naming stuff her mother did for me while I was in college and said, I would be nothing without her family and I'm petty for wanting anything back. I was called all out of my name. Stephanie said my mom owes me money too, but I'm not coming after her with the law about it. I said your mother had $21,000 saved at closing. It can't all be gone. Stephanie jumps up and said, what my mom does with her money isn't your business. Stop watching her pockets, bitch. You know buying a house ain't easy. Instead of being proud, you trying to take it from her. I said, I don't want her house. I want my money. At this time, things were so loud and heated. We were asked to leave Longhorn Steakhouse by the manager. Stephanie said, I guess I'll see you in court because I'm not paying for this steak dinner. It's on you, bitch. Sadly, I am now blocked by Stephanie and Wanda and was sent screenshots of them talking real wild about me on Facebook, saying I better come get my money back in blood. April, everybody knows I will beat Stephanie's nose to the back of her skull. So all the online tough talk is comical at this point and is evidence they have no intention of paying me. I will be providing all screenshots to the judge. I took Thursday off from work to go downtown to take legal action. I even paid extra so a marshal can serve her the paperwork. We have a court date scheduled for May 31st, and I'm sure I will get my money back. Just wanted to give you an update. Lesson learned. I won't let nobody borrow anything again, even in writing. So this is the sad part about it. You know what I'm saying? I was really hoping that... Candace would be able to resolve things with Wanda's daughter, Stephanie, prior to taking it to small claims court. You know what I'm saying? But we see here that Wanda's daughter, Stephanie, is just as irresponsible as her mother is. So what? Now, here's the thing. This girl, 
First of all, Longhorn Steakhouse is me and Tati's favorite place to eat. I, I don't know where Candace is from. I wonder if it's from Arizona. I'm pretty sure Longhorn has other places just more than just Arizona, but they got some good ass steak, girl. Okay. So if y'all got a Longhorn Steak House in your state, girl, try them because they got some good ass food. Ooh, them baked potatoes is good as hell. Okay. Mm, yes. Okay. Anyway, it ain't about that. But, you know, I, I did tell her, won't you invite Stephanie out for lunch or dinner so that way you can discuss what happened with her her mother and you and about the loan situation. You know, when you out in public, you would think that people would handle themselves a lot better. Like, I don't know about y'all, but I don't really like to be embarrassed when I'm outside. I really don't like a whole lot of people looking at me. I really don't want the attention on me, it's, especially if it's negative shade. I really don't want anybody watching me pulling their phones out due to, you know, my altercation or, my, you know, I just don't want that. And so I felt like if you invite Stephanie out in a public situation, in a pl public place and tell her what you and her mom had going on, then maybe she would understand that and she would act like a civilized person, a civilized human being. But this bitch did not. She cut up in a goddamn restaurant and had them both removed, kicked the fuck out. And then on top of that, had the nerve, the audacity to tell Candace that she wasn't paying for the steak dinner. The steak dinner's on her, bitch. Now, you know what? Candace, you real good because you're not going to sit there and keep calling me out my motherfucking name and being loud and belligerent with me in public because I probably would have reached across the table and had my hands around your fucking throat. That's me. That's me in a nutshell because I can't take but so much. And when people start getting loud with me, I get real hand happy and I'll be ready to reach over and grab you, okay? And it ain't out of love, okay? It ain't out of love and it damn sure ain't out of, oh, I want to give you a hug, bitch, okay? It's probably because I want to knock your motherfucking lights out, okay? Put you to sleep, okay? For a little while, all right? And it ain't with NyQuil, okay? But this girl acted a fool in a goddamn restaurant. And then on top of that, her and her mother acted a fool on Facebook. Now, you know something? It's sad when I tell y'all that family is the worst to do you in. Now, this girl's been with this family for God knows how long, how long she's known them. So we got Stephanie, um, Wanda's daughter talking about, oh, well, if it wasn't for us, you wouldn't be nothing. That's so not true. That's so not true. Just because y'all was there for her and looked out for her doesn't mean she wouldn't be anything. But you shouldn't even use that as a reason why you don't want to give somebody your money back. Now, Stephanie's talking about calling a housewarming gift. I'm sorry, but you signed a whole contract with me saying that once your house was done, once you was done with the payment to your house, you would give me my money back. $2,500, that ain't, that ain't a little bit of money. $2,500 is enough. $2,500 could be somebody's rent. $2,500 could... Look, you can do a lot with $2,500. I'm just saying. And for you to just give it away and not get the fuck back, you're crazy. Mm -mm. Definitely wouldn't have been me. So it's unfortunate that she got to take them to small claims court, but the disrespectful part is on the, that family. Wanda and Stephanie. Candace, let me tell you this. Be glad that you seen what you seen when you did see what you see, because it could have been worse. $2,500 could have been a whole lot worse. The situation could have been a whole lot worse. Sometimes we need eye openers just to see who we really dealing with, just to see who we really fucking with, okay? And it's unfortunate that his family was there for you during your time of need, okay? But use that as an excuse as to not pay you back. This is what I be talking about with people. People be so lame and disrespectful. People be so lame and unhonest. Like, you really going to use the situation of my mother passing and being there for me as a reason to not give me back my fucking money? Are you out of your fucking mind? How ratchet is that? Like, who does that? How disrespectful? If that's supposed to be your friend's daughter, how could you disrespect your friend like that who's passed away? Like that is some real ill intent, wicked, evil shit right there. So you use the fact that this young lady's mother passed away and you've been there for me as an excuse, as a reason to not give me my money back. They already had this plan. She knew she wasn't going to give you the fucking money back. She felt like it was a, it was okay for her not to give you the money back. Like, I don't know about y'all, but if I wrote and, and signed a contract, I would feel real low and like a piece of shit if I didn't give somebody back their money that I signed the paperwork saying that I'm going to give you back your money or I told you verbally. $2,500 you paid to have this woman's car repaired and she doesn't feel like she has to give it back to you. Like, you got to be fucking kidding me. She gave back $200 to this young lady and felt like it was okay and like that was a drop in the bucket. Like, that was it. That's what I'm giving you the fuck back. Meanwhile, her daughter's talking about, well, call that a housewarming gift? No, bitch. A housewarming gift is the marshal showing up, knocking on your goddamn new home door, serving you with paperwork that's that's your housewarming gift okay that that's your housewarming gift you know i i'm sorry candace that i even suggested taking her to a public place to eat and resolve the issue because some people you just can't take no fucking wear okay and it's, it's sad but some people you just cannot take no fucking wear 
okay? And be happy that you realized who they were. Cut them the fuck off and go about your business. All of this bullshit talking on Facebook or any type of social media about people is ridiculous. I don't understand why people do that. They go on social media and talk shit about people or pop off and pop their shit. Like, shit like that will have you hurt. You know what I'm saying? Because eventually you can and will and maybe will run into the person in real life. Stop talking shit. But these are the people that you see on a normal basis. They know her. They are family like friends. They are family like family. They are like family to her. And for them to go on Facebook, two ungrown women, because that's what I call it. When you acting like this immature, you ungrown. You ungrown. This is really ungrown. And you know something? Karma do come around. Some people really fail and realize that it's called karma. It will come back around and it will bite your ass. Okay? It will bite you in the ass, baby. It will bite you in the ass. It comes around. Sometimes that come around real quick. You don't even know. And sometimes it takes its time when you least expect it. I like the karma when you least expect it. You know what I'm saying? I like it when it comes back around when you least expect it. Because you be all in your glory. You be feeling like everything is going good for you. Everything is hopscotch in the jump. You know what I'm saying? Everything is good to go. And the next thing you know, it just bites down below. Okay. Yes. So I like the karma when it takes its time and it comes back unexpectedly. That's that's what I like. Okay. Because you don't expect that shit. You think you done got all scot-free. Little do she know she's not about to get all scot-free. And I hope you get all your money back in a timely manner. Now, here's the thing. She's going to have to have her checks garnished. I think this lady has three jobs, if I'm correct. I think Wanda has three jobs. She she worked three jobs to save up to purchase this house. So bitch, save up and purchase and, and give her her fucking money back. Did Candace say she will punch Stephanie's nose into the back of her skull? Like, goddamn, that's some hard ass hitting. I don't think I would ever want anybody to hit me in my nose to where that shit goes to the back of my skull. Like, girl, woo child, miss me with that. I am not trying to approach you and not being on no bully shit, no negative shit with Candace, okay? I might need Candace as a friend, okay? Because if she hit that hard, bitch, I need you on my side. Where, where do you reside at, okay? Where where are you living at? Because I'm just saying, we can hang out, right? I'm just saying, if a bitch tell you they are going to punch you in your motherfucking nostrils to the back of your skull, then bitch, you might want to watch what you say to them, okay? Candace, get your money back and leave them the fuck alone. I'm so sorry that you had to go through this and you had to find out the hard way that this is the type of shit that you, you know, you got to deal with and it's unfortunate. But listen, don't loan nobody no money. Even with a written note, you can't even loan nobody no money. It's unfortunate. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes you got to just say to people, I'm sorry, I don't got it. Even though you know you got it, I'm sorry, I don't got it. It is what it is. Okay. Leave your thoughts down below. Okay. Now let's get on to the new Real Talks for the week. Okay. So this one was a labeled, excuse me, subject or titled racist ass Karen. Hey divas and Debos, how how's everyone? Thank you everyone in advance for any suggestions, opinions, or advice you will be giving during this real talk in the comments section. Miss April, I thank you in advance for reading this. So here we are in the year 2024. And by the way, my name is Morgan and you can call me such. It's 2024 and people still out here acting like us as a people, us black people, African American people do not belong in this country. I live in North Carolina, and I honestly have never been so disgusted by a group of people. I'm not a racist person, but I'm sick and tired of these clear bitches. She called them clear bitches. I am sick and tired of these clear bitches at my job giving me a side eye or trying to throw shade my way. Of course, I'm not taking any of it lightly because I'm not one to be quiet, but I'm so over these clear folks. I get to work, been working there a little over a year now, and I don't feel like I, I need to prove myself to anyone, especially if I'm not your employee, but your co-worker. A few of these bitches have asked me, is my hair real? And when I replied with yes, the response from her was, oh, I didn't know y'all hair can grow that long. Like, what the fuck is that supposed to mean? Not only that, one of them complimented me on my body and lips, saying how I have a beautiful figure, she loves my hips and full lips, and did I have any work done? Of of course, it was none of her fucking business, but I let her know I am all natural. Well, her so-called co-worker friend walks by and said, girl, you know that that is, their ge that is their genetics. This is the same one who commented on my hair. She says little side shit about black people, how she's tired of uh, stealing from stores or doing all these crimes. She's tired of their men googly eyeing us. I be hearing her, and then when I approach her in the break room, she tries to clear things up as if she didn't say something. I'm actually really ready to follow her ass in the ladies' room and give her something to really simmer on after I tell her what it is. Miss April, it's 2024. I'm not sure what makes them think that acting this way is okay. Like, when does this end? I have already had my say with the bitch at my job because I don't back down for no one. My mother raised me to stand up for myself, as I am. How would you handle this situation? What's her name? Morgan. Girl! Mm -hmm. Ooh, 
girl, listen, it is 2024, okay? It, it definitely is. But did she call them clear bitches? Like, I like that. Clear bitches. But yeah, girl, it's 2024 and they're, they're still out there acting like it's okay that um they say the shit that they say out their mouths. Like, it's, 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 it's 2024 and you be amazed at the shit that's still going on. It's 2024. Yes, okay? You, the thing that gets me, though, is why do people think that black women can't have no long hair? I'm not really understanding that. Like, my daughters, they have long hair. Tati has long hair. I have had hair down to the middle of my back, okay? So I don't really understand why people think that black people can't grow hair. It depends on how you take care of your hair, and that's with any race. If you don't take care of your motherfucking hair, then you ain't gonna have no hair, okay? It is what it is. But we can grow hair. Get the fuck out of here with that bullshit. We can definitely grow hair. You know what? The side shade and all this talking about, oh, I didn't know y'all hair could grow that long. Girl, I think I would have took her in the fucking ladies' room and let her know what it really is. Like she said, she gonna give her something to simmer on. Then we got the um then we got another one talking about, oh, is is your body all natural and your lips? See, here's the thing. There's so many fake bodies walking around. And I, and I listen, it, that's y'all business. I don't give a fuck what you do with your body. You're not hurting me at all, okay? But some people just don't have no decorum when they ask questions, okay? You know what I'm saying? Like, they don't believe shit can be real. First of all, I would have told that bitch it's none of your business what the fuck is real or me or not. I'm not about to tell you about my motherfucking hair. If you think we cannot grow hair, then bitch, continue to think that. What would I do in this situation? Man, listen, I might have to give her a business, not physically, but verbally, okay? Um, Morgan, don't physically harm her. Let her know what it is. Is. Let her know what time it is. You know what I'm saying? Becky, Karen, whatever you want to fucking call her. Let her know what time it is, okay? And then she continues on with the nonsense, the shenanigans. Then, sweetheart, what I would do is I would go ahead and report her ass. I would definitely go ahead and report her. I would, you know what, though? I would I would report her anyway. Don't even, don't even address her. Report her first, and then you can address her later. So that way you have proof and you already have it down documented that this bitch has been harassing you and saying racist shit and you've already had it documented you've already spoken to the higher ups about her that's what the fuck i would do okay that's not a punk move that's not a bitch move but it's um i'm covering myself move because if anything bitch you're gonna get fired you're gonna get kicked the fuck out of here not me because the next time i say something to you i've already warned the higher ups about you and you still running your motherfucking mouth oh yes sweetheart i'm going to give you the tongue lashing of a lifetime where your ass is going to simmer down forever okay that's what you do. You don't let them bitches keep walking all over you and saying snide shit. I just can't stand when a bitch do shit like that. I don't give a fuck what race you are. Now, it's still 2024, and I get it. We are tired of the backlash, and certain things should be kept to yourself. Like a co-worker said, I'm tired of them stealing and committing and committing crimes, talking about us black folks. Sad to say, but we're not the only ones out here committing crimes, okay? It's not just our race. Yes, I'm tired of it too, okay? As a black woman, I am tired of it too. I'm, I'm tired of seeing my people in the news, on social media, doing dumb shit, carjacking, stealing shit out Target, stealing shit out of Ulta. I'm tired of seeing all of that because it's just not making us look good at all, okay? But let's just realize, we are not the only people out here that do crimes, okay? We are not. Look at the jails. We ain't the only people in jail, okay? I don't give a fuck if there was 10 clear people and 100 of us. We still ain't the only ones doing the crime out here. There are all types of races in jail. All type of races do crime. All type of races steal. All type of races do dumb shit, okay? Let's just be for real. All type of races, okay? So let's not just categorize only us yeah that shit is hurtful when i see my own people out there doing dumb shit because i want us to rise above that shit i want us to do better as a black woman who has black children and is a black woman and is a part of the black race i want us to do better for ourselves so that way other races can stop talking shit the fuck about us but here's the thing it don't matter if we did good all year round every motherfucking day somebody's still gonna have something to say about us as a black people okay they can bring that shit all the way back to the slavery days and say oh we weren't picking cotton fast enough i mean they just gonna have something to fuck to say regardless of what we do good or what we do wrong they're gonna have some shit to say but here's the thing i'm not about to go to work every day and have becky and karen running their motherfucking mouth and throwing shade at me now you didn't already prove your point to them but what you need to do is go ahead to the higher ups and let them know becky karen samantha shanene or whoever the fuck else is running a mouth talking racist shit that probably right there get her ass the fuck fired oh like get her fired that'll be your best bet i love to get people in trouble and i don't mean that in like oh i'm a snitch but here's the thing if I'm at a place of employment and you being disrespectful to me and you still working here, bitch, I'm going to love to get you in trouble. I'm going to love to get you fired, especially to those who think that they better than me. Oh, yes, bitch, you can get it. I'm going to get you fired. And that's going to piss you off even more. And that's going to make me happy even more. Because for one, I ain't got to see your fucking ugly ass face every day no more. And for two, I'm going to know you out of job. So therefore, you're going to go broke sooner or later. And for three, you got fired, bitch. Ha ha. You felt like it was OK to talk shit, but you got kicked the fuck out the goddamn door. OK. And then the next time I might see you in public, that's what I might just come up to you and smack fire out of you. 
because I, look, you fire now. I can do what the fuck I want to do. Okay, to you. But yeah, I like getting bitches in trouble, especially when it comes to shit like this. Take that shit to higher ups and get her ass fucking fired. You know what I'm saying? Make sure that you cool and, you know, cool, cool, cool beans when you're telling on her. Don't be hostile when you go telling to the higher ups about her. Be cool. Be calm. Be professional. Don't go in there with no rowdy attitude, acting like it really is bothering you. Go in there with a calm, collective attitude because you know what? Even though you might go in there, the way you you handle yourself, they still going to look at you. You know what I'm saying? They're going to look at you because you're a black woman. So my thing is this. When you go tell the higher ups about how Becky Karen has been treating you and been throwing snide shade and racist comments, be calm about the shit. Don't go any on some real aggressive shit. OK, because they're going to look at that as, oh, maybe that's why Becky Karen is talking shit about her and being racist. Maybe that's why. So when you go in there, you handle yourself like a professional woman that you are. And you let them know how it's bothering you. But don't be so aggressive. Don't be ratchet. Don't be rude. Just be calm and cool. Mannerism. You know what I'm saying? Have some decorum when you go in there. So that way she looks worse. You make her look worse. You know what I'm saying? It's always cool to make other people look bad when they fucking with you. Okay? I'm just saying, I'm, I don't like making people look bad. But bitch, if you keep fucking with me, I'm going to love to make you look the fuck bad for other people. It's just what it is. But when you go in here, have decorum. Have class. Be cool and calm. And talk your ish about Becky Karen, okay? That's her name, Becky Karen. And that way they see your side. Oh, Morgan came in here. She was calm and cool. Why is this lady bothering her? We're going to have to check this lady out. We're going to have to have her under surveillance. I'm telling you. And if Becky Karen say any other smart shit to you, you know what? Next time you see her walk to the ladies' room, you go in there and you talk your shit. But talk your shit in a real professional mannerism. Because they love to see us get out of hand. They love to see us get belligerent. They love to see us raise our voices. So when you in there and you see her, you let her know in a calm, cool manner. So what is this I hear about you? You're saying things about our race again. What is this about? Sometimes when you smile at them, that's even scary. Okay, I'm just saying. Sometimes we got to be, you know, we, we have to show our class to get our point across. That's what you do, Morgan. Go in there, go to the higher ups. Let them know how Becky Karen has been coming at you. Let them know how Becky Karen's being disrespectful. Let them know what Becky Karen has been up to, okay? That's how I would handle things. And the next time you see Becky Karen and she throws some shade at you, you could throw shade back too. And you could throw it back real politely and respectfully so that way she don't go running to the to the masses trying to say, oh, well, you know, Morgan, she threatened me. She just did this and did that. Listen, it's 2024. I'm so tired of this fucking racist shit. Like, seriously, I'm over it, okay? We all bleed the same. Let's just be for real. We all fucking bleed the same. Let's stop with the foolishness and the shenanigans. Though, me saying this is not going to fucking stop it, unfortunately, but I'm just saying it just because that's is what the fuck I would like happen, but I would definitely go ahead and report her. Man, listen, when you go to work, when people go to work, they go to work. They don't go there for no other bullshit. They don't go there to make friends. They don't go there to fucking have beef with nobody. They damn sure don't go there to be shaded and made to feel uncomfortable. Like, who wakes up in the morning and is like, you know what? Today I'm gonna go to work to get shaded and talk shit. You know what I'm saying? I, I want to be bothered today. That's why I'm going to work so somebody can harass me. Who the fuck goes to work for that shit? People don't want to get up and go to work as it is. But when we go to work, we want to have a pleasant day because we really don't want to fucking beat it. And I don't know about y'all, but if I got some kind of bitch some in there talking shit to me about my race or what the fuck we don't grow it's gonna be a problem okay it's gonna be a fucking problem and i try to give everybody grace i really really do try to give everybody grace but it seems like some people just don't have the knowledge to read the fucking room learn how to read the fucking room straight up learn how to read the room leave morgan your thoughts of what you would do with racist karen becky or racist becky karen because that's her name becky karen she gets all the names becky karen becky being her first and karen being her fucking last you know i ran into a karen once okay i, I did actually run into a Karen once. I think once. I Maybe this was a, a Karen that, this was a memorable moment. You know what? No, I ran into a Karen three times. But the, the most memorable one was uh, the one time I was at Target. And I think I told y'all this story before, but the one time I was at Target, you know how the Target has the mirrors, all stores have the mirrors. You could just look at yourself in the mirror, you know, a body length mirror. Now, you know, I didn't feel like trying on this shirt because I already had one in that same size. So I felt like, you know, I just wanted to put the shirt up to me and see how the color looked up against my skin. It was like this lime green type of tank top. I already had one in white and I knew the size of it and I had one in black. So I wanted to try out this lime green one. So I went to the mirror because I wasn't trying to put the shit on. I wasn't going to go in the fitting room and try it on because I already had one, right? So I had put it up to me to see how I was looking and I was standing right there in the full length mirror with the shirt up against me. Please tell me why Becky Karen gonna walk her ass over and I'm thinking like I can see her in the mirror. She gonna come and peek her head over and look at me. She was like, no, that's not for you. Like basically. Man, did I have to tell her to shut the fuck up? She better find Jesus because she's like, oh Jesus, don't bring him in this shit. I had to let this lady know to mind her fucking business. I wasn't there for it. Don't you ever disrespect me again. Don't you ever disrespect me, period. And mind your fucking business. She kept trying to say, I'm sorry, you're right, you're right. Nah, bitch, don't try to pacify me now and get me to stop talking and get me to shut the fuck up 
up and get me off your ass, bitch. Now, nah. all she kept saying, is, oh, Jesus, I'm so don't bring Jesus in this. Don't bring him in this. You're going to need him. You're going to need him after I finish with your ass. That was the most memorable moment for me because who the fuck asked you to put your motherfucking face? Like she literally leaned in the mirror and I seen her and told me no. Like, what the fuck? You old bitch. Mind your goddamn business. Okay, so that was a really memorable one. I've had a couple encounters with Becky Karens. And when I tell you that I have to put them in their place too, I put them in their place. It, it, in general, I don't give a fuck what race you are. Mind your fucking business. That's all I can tell you is to mind your fucking business. Any race. I don't, I don't go too keen on people in my fucking business. I don't go too keen on people um, inserting themselves into my business. Just mind your fucking business and I'll mind mine. Period. Oh, let's get on to the next one. Okay. Total thief. Mm-hmm. Hey, April. Hey, Diva. So first, thank you for reading this. I have somewhat of an issue and I need to know how you would handle it. So my baby daddy, we have been off and on for like 13 years. We have two kids. One is a nine-year-old boy and also a three-year-old girl. So I'm good with just the two kids that I have, one of each, which is great. And you can also call me Nikki and you can call my baby daddy, Rob. So he currently lives with me. Yes, we are together. He was put out of his mom's house about a year ago and we've been trying to make things work. My issue issue though is this he needs to find a decent job this dude has no ambition it seems like he will work a job for a couple of months then quit working because he says he gets bored miss april i have a job i've been working the same job for several years now as a manager at a senior assistant living resident i love my job and the people i work with i have even offered to help him get a job there as well we have plenty of openings for janitorial ground keepers kitchen transportation outside the facility and a couple of more um openings that i'm forgetting well he turned them down saying he doesn't want to work with me. April, he ain't got to work with me. There are different shifts, but he needs to work. He needs to find a job. He quit a job three months ago. I know that may not be long, but for me, it feels like eternity. He will sit around all day playing that stupid ass Xbox. Yeah, he will clean and cook, get the kids straight, pick them up, drop them off, etc. I do that as well, and I work. He feels like he's earning his keep by doing these things, but no, that's just a part of being an adult. Look, like I said, I've been going through this with him for years, and I'm tired of it. Last week, he took my car without asking while I was sleeping, went and hung out with his brother, playing basketball and cruising the streets because he used up half my gas, didn't replace it, and may I add, left my car a mess. He has his own car but cannot afford to get it fixed as the alternator and starter went. And I'm not paying for it because I'm paying all the bills on my own as it is. We just got into an argument a few days ago but the about the usage of my car. He had the nerve to call me a selfish, stingy bitch. When I tell you I flipped out, told him he could take his raggedy, broke, unemployed ass out of my place and go back to his mama's because I didn't need him here. We went back and forth, back and forth for like an hour. He finally left and took a few bags with him. He went to stay with his brother. Now he's calling and texting me, trying to say it was my fault. We got into this argument because I don't know how to communicate properly with him and how I don't have to make him feel less than when he's using my car, saying things about not filling it up with gas. Then he tries to tell me he wants to come back home and he misses me and the kids. He's trying to do better. He will apply for a job where I work at and cannot please come and take him back. Now, mind you, I haven't answered the phone or replied to any of those messages whenever he calls. However, he's leaving these messages on my phone and texting me. What would you do, Nikki? First of all, if anybody calls me a stingy, selfish bitch when they're using my shit, man, listen, you are already know what the fuck I'm gonna do. I'm gonna let yourself sit right over there with your brother. You, your broke, unemployed ass, can sit right the fuck over there with your brother. Girl, Nikki, he probably wanna come back because, listen, that's his brother. His brother probably ain't gonna make let him allow him to stay there for free all the time. He ain't got no kids with him. That's his brother. He gonna want his share of the rent paid. Okay, his share of the bills paid. His brother ain't gonna allow him to sit around on his lazy ass and do nothing all day. Okay, his brother don't give a fuck about him cooking and cleaning and doing all of that shit. That's his brother's place. His brother want him to find a job. That's probably why he want to come back home real quick because he realized it ain't really good over here. Now, let let me tell you this. How is you making anyone feel less than by telling them that they did not fill up your gas tank and left your car a mess? I'd be damn fool if I allow you to ride around in my shit all motherfucking day and you don't put gas in it and you leave it a mess. For one, if you took my car without asking me while I was sleeping, that's considered car theft if you really want to be on some real shit, okay? Because I could have woke up from a nap not knowing where the fuck you was at and my car was going and I could have reported that shit stolen. A bitch like me probably would have reported that shit stolen okay because you didn't even ask me if you could take my car but you took my car you left it a whole fucking mess and you didn't even fill it back the fuck up are you out your rabbit ass mind okay are you out your rabbit ass mind now he's calling you and texting you and he also blamed you for the whole argument that's reason right there to let him stay and marinate in his self foolishness at his brother house okay why did his mother kick him out why did his mother put him out okay that's the main question so he got put out a year ago from his mama house why was it because he didn't stay working he wasn't employed because he's a slob because he's lazy what was the reason his mother put him out for a reason what is the reason don't you know new york bitches are savage 
Jeff and Jason, what was the reason? What was the reason? What was the reason? What was the reason? His mother put him out for a reason. There's a reason. She didn't just put him out and say, well, son, I love you so much. You're such an amazing son. We're going to just, I'm just going to kick you out because you're so great. So his mother put him out for a reason. There is a reason she put his ass the fuck out. Okay. And now here you are picking up the slack of his mama. Girl, listen, let me tell you something. There's no way on God's green earth would I allow anyone to live with me any longer if they said that I was a selfish, stingy bitch. He got a whole car. That's not your problem that the alternator and the starter won't fix, ain't fixed. That's, that seems like a personal him problem. Okay. That definitely sounds like a him problem. And y'all been together for 13 years off and on and y'all not married. So is he trying to even marry you? Girl, don't even worry about that part. OK, let's not even worry about that part, because from the looks of the email, from the read of the email, he's not worthy of being married to. If this nigga cannot keep a steady job, then why do you want to be with him? OK, I know it's not about the money, but here's the thing. We are getting at a certain age in our life where we have to learn to grow the fuck up and fend for ourselves and do the grown up thing, the adulting. OK, it doesn't matter if you cook, clean, pick the kids up. Like she said, she does that shit, too. And she works. Trust me, when I worked outside of the house, I had to do the same fucking thing i would bring my kids to daycare in the morning and then i would take my ass to work then i would pick their ass up and then i would come home i will cook i will clean the fuck up okay and i will get them ready and myself ready for the next day regardless if i was there with my husband or if he was in jail i did this shit on my own he ain't never picked the kids up from daycare and when he was there he ain't never picked the kids up from daycare never never i ain't, he ain't never picked the kids up okay he might have did it out of 10 out of all those years maybe like three or four times less that's that ain't shit okay but i went to work i brought my kids to and from daycare i came home and i cooked dinner and I did all of that shit. So cooking and cleaning and doing the things that you're supposed to do, that don't really give you no brownie points. That don't really, that, that, don't, that don't really talk say for much. That's what the fuck you're supposed to do when you're adult. You're supposed to clean. You're supposed to cook. You're supposed to pick up your kids. That's what the fuck you're supposed to do. So you don't get no type of brownie points for that. Man, please. Okay. If he feels like he's earning his keep by doing that, then what the fuck is he? The nanny? Because the only way he's going to be earning his keep is for doing that is if y'all ain't together. He ain't fucking you and you ain't fucking him. Y'all ain't got no kids involved in this. And he works for you and he's the nanny. And he, he lives the free room and board. And this is what he does on the, as, as a part of his keep. Other than that, that, that's what the fuck he's supposed to do. That's his job as a parent and as an adult. These are the things he's supposed to do. Girl, let that man stay right the fuck where he's at. You want to call him rock? He is now in between a rock and a hard place. Let him stay where the fuck he's at, okay? Because, for one, he disrespected you by calling you a stingy self selfish bitch. Why would anyone call their lady out of their name like that? Like, for one, I just find that to be so disrespectful. But also, there's the one thing that I don't really like in this email with, what is her name? Nikki said, my baby daddy. Like, I just hate that term so much. The kids are not even babies anymore. Y'all are still calling me my baby daddy. I just never really cared for that term. And I was called that once and I had to let my child's father know, don't you ever call me your baby mama again. He apologized and he was like, you're right, you're right. That's a ratchet term to me. The mother of my children, you can call him the father of your children. Don't you ever call me your baby mama, okay? Who the fuck is you? I am not one of those baby mamas. Do not address me as such. Do not use that as a title when speaking upon my name as such. The mother of my children. That's what the fuck you can call me. Not my baby mama. That's just, it's just so tacky. And my baby daddy is also tacky. So let's please stop using that as a term because it just drives me crazy. I know sometimes people slip up and say that, you know what I'm saying? I have done it too, but cause I'm not perfect, but I'm just saying, I just really hate that term. You know what I'm saying? It just seems so like, it just seems so ungrown. It's just so ratchet. I just don't like the term. But Nikki, you already done the right thing by not responding to his, any of his text messages or phone calls. You you do you seem like you're in a great headspace and you seem like you know what to do. You seem like you're doing the right thing. Now, what would I do? What is my advice or what would I do, my opinion? I would let that man stay right the fuck where he's at. He at his brother's house. They seem to get along just fine. They go cruising the streets. They go playing basketball. Man, they probably even play Xbox together. I don't know. But let him stay right where the fuck he's at. Now he's trying to come back because he knows he's going to have to pay some bills over there. He feel like when he come home to you, you're not really going to put him out like that. You're not really going to fuss and holler about him not getting a job or working. Three months is a long time to not have a job. I don't give a fuck who you are. It's a long time. So yeah, it do feel like an eternity. Some people might feel like three months not having a job is not a long time but bitch if i ain't got no job and i ain't got no income coming in for three months that shit is a long time okay i'm sitting here worried about how i'm paying bills then if i had no job for three months no you you let him know where he's at is a great place to be 
continue not replying to him. I mean, listen, 13 years off and on is a lot. Now he wants to find a job with you because you done put him out. Yeah, I don't believe that. I, I don't I don't believe that he's going to look for a job. I don't believe that he really wants to work where you're at. He only wants to be there because he has no real place to go right now. And he feels like well, because if he comes back to your home, y'all will be a family. And once y'all are family, you know what I'm saying? Family don't put each other out. Yes, the fuck they do. Yes, the fuck they do. Listen, let me tell you something. You're not about to be sitting here calling me no selfish, stingy bitch using my motherfucking ride, okay? That's what we're not going to do. You ride out in my shit, you're going to put some gas up in it. Um, whatever gas you use, you're going to fill it back up. And you're not going to leave a mess in my car. Those That's disrespectful. That's disrespectful. No, let him sit where the fuck he's at and let him marinate on that shit, okay? Let him use his brother as a, as, 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 as a comfort blanket. Let him stay over there. Let him let him learn. Let him learn his lesson. Now he's trying to come back home. What would y'all do? Because I'd be damned if I allow anybody to call me out my name. Y'all going back and forth, back and forth, and y'all been off and on. Why y'all off and on? Off and on doesn't sound like it's a good thing, okay? Off and on seems like y'all relationship really is not solidified. Off and on sounds like y'all really can't get along. Off and on sounds like something, well, listen, it's time for me to move the fuck on, okay? If we want an off and on relationship for 13 years, that means you need to move the fuck on, okay, without that person, okay? Because if you cannot have a solid foundation with this person as a relationship for 13 years, then it's time for you to, to say bye. Maybe this was your sign from whomever telling you, leave this man alone and let him go find his way. And that's exactly what I would do. I would leave this man alone and I would let him go find his way. Some people have to learn the hard way. If you keep helping a grown-up person, if you keep helping an adult, they're never going to learn. If you keep being their crutch, they're never going to walk, okay? If you keep allowing them to lean on you, baby, they're just going to keep leaning on you. They're going to lean on you so hard, your ass going to be on the ground, okay? You understand what I'm saying? Let him be where he's at. Let him let him build himself up. And if he becomes something later on in life, if he starts doing the right thing, then maybe you can consider getting back with him. But for right now, I feel like you need to focus on you and your children and not being able to care for no grown-ass man. He can either go back to his mama house, he can stay with his brother, he can find shelter, you know what I'm saying? He can find a room, he can find a job, all that type of shit. But don't allow him to come back in your life on some negative shit. He done already blamed you for the whole argument. How you gonna blame somebody for some shit, but then say you miss them and you want to come back home? Like, where does that make any fucking sense? You gonna blame them for the argument, and then you gonna ask them to come back the fuck home. That don't make no sense at all. Like, where is this making any sense? Is he dumbstruck? Like, what the fuck is wrong with him? Like, you gonna blame me for us having an argument over you taking my car without asking me, and you gonna then turn around and say, I miss you and the kids, can I please come back? Like, I know some people be really stupid as hell, but like, how you gonna blame someone for taking a car and using up their gas and filthy in their car up and blame them for saying something to you about, about the situation and then blame them for the argument and then probably blame them for kicking you the fuck out and then text them all of this shit and then in the next message turn around and say well i miss you and the kids are you out your fucking mind you know what some people really need to be left the fuck alone like i really be like you know are these people like dumbstruck girl nikki do you make sure that you take care of your family and do this to him let him get his shit the fuck together because the way i see things he's never going to get it together while you're with him because he's just going to keep using you as a crutch like straight up he's just going to continue using you as a crutch and we see that he couldn't do that at his mother's house because there was a reason why she put him out. And it wasn't because he was the best person in the world. So I would allow him to stay where the fuck he's at. I would not fucking reach out back to him. I would not communicate with him at all. Since he already said you don't know how to communicate properly, bitch, keep not communicating properly. Don't communicate at all with him. Let him sit in there and stew in his juices. Let him go find a job on his own, okay? If he does come to your job looking for a job, that's fine, great. You don't have to converse with him. You don't have to bother with him. Leave your phone blocked to him and just continue on with your life. Because this man has not grown up and he's never going to see the grown up side until somebody allows him to see it. People need to let him be. Let him be and let him do his thing. You know what I'm saying? Maybe his brother can instill some type of motivation, some ambition in him, some type of goals. Because sometimes we, they need to see another man doing better than them or doing what they're supposed to do in order to do the right thing. Seeing a woman do it and his his baby mama, his mother of his children do it, you're probably not really focusing on that because he's like, well, we got kids together. We a family. She would never do me like this. Well, I guess he learned today that she put his ass the fuck out and now he's homeless, broke, unemployed, ass as homeless, living on his brother's couch. Period. Let him stay there. That's what the fuck I would do. I would let his ass stay there. Period. Y'all let Nikki know what y'all would do. I'd be damned if somebody take my motherfucking car and be driving it around like you're on cruise control and you ain't filling it the fuck back up with gas, but you took it without asking me. Nigga, you'd be in jail. My car would be repoed or possessed from you. It would be taken from you and you would be in jail. It would be, um, Bolo, what is it, on the lookout or whatever? I don't know what you call it, but... People would be on the lookout. Police would be on the lookout for my car because I would fucking call and let them know this motherfucker stole my car and he took it without asking. Technically, that's thieving, okay? 
that is steaming, like she said. Anyway, y'all, I hope y'all had like a really great day while watching this. I'm a go, you know, your girl A. Check out my website for my bracelets. Check my website out. I will list it down below. We're gonna go and put these on sale. Check out She Curve. You know what I'm saying? If you wanna be snatched for the summer times, check them out. I'm gonna do my, my big one right now and go ahead and try them on. Snatch it in. Also, check the description box for the baby registry. I appreciate you all for stopping through and all that you do. I love you all. Stay safe, stay diva and be delicious. Leave the comments below. And on that note, your girl got to go. But I love you though. Bye.